Hello scientists, it's scientist Renee. I'm back with you for chapter three, lesson five. And today we're actually going to be reading a book called The Scientist Who Cracked the Dolphin Code. So the first thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're going to do is observing differences in dolphin sounds. So we've been investigating how sounds are different and we've learned that sounds can be different from one another in a couple main ways. So see if you can whisper in your head, what are the two biggest ways that we know sounds are different from each other? So the biggest ways that we've learned is that waves have different amplitudes and waves have different wavelengths, which gives them different volumes and different pitches. And so using that, what do you think? Which arrow shows amplitude, blue or orange? Hopefully you said orange. And then that means that the blue wave shows us the wavelength, the length from one peak to another. And the amplitude is how amplified, how tall the wave is. So we've been investigating this question. How does a dolphin calf know which call is his mother's call? And today we're actually going to go a little bit, uh, we're going to go into a little different variation of that question, which is how can dolphins use different sounds to communicate with each other? Like, that's a question I have. How do, how do dolphins even change their communication patterns? So I'm going to play three dolphin sounds for you. As you listen, pay attention to how the calls of dolphin A, B, and C are different. That was A. And C. Let's listen to all three one more time. Pretty interesting. That's three different and those are three very different sounds. So what sound what differences did you notice between the three dolphin calls? And how would you describe the differences in the sound waves? How would you even visualize those different sounds looking? So take a moment and just see if you can even come up with words for yourself for how how would you describe the differences in those sounds? You might want to either write that down or share with somebody in your house and then come back when you're ready. All right, welcome back. You heard some really different sounds from some dolphins and we're going to investigate or we're going to read about a scientist who investigated how dolphins communicate. So this book is about how dolphins use different sounds to communicate and it's called The Scientist Who Cracked the Dolphin Code. So what do you think it means to crack a code? If I think of like a message that's in code, it might have like secret symbols and I'm trying to figure out what those symbols mean. So if I think about dolphin code, I think this scientist is trying to maybe figure out what dolphins mean by their sounds. So we're gonna read this book and remember to visualize as we read today. So let's get to our book. We've got the scientist who cracked the dolphin code. Leila Saig is a scientist who investigates animals. She has loved animals her whole life. When Saig was a child, she spent hours exploring the beach near her home. She loved to watch the hermit crabs walk across the sand looking for food. At home, Saig took care of her family's fish. She kept the fish tank clean and watched the baby fish as they grew. She named the fish and could tell them apart by how they looked. 
Ooh, hermit crabs. She liked to explore the beach and she saw these little things called hermit crabs walking across the sand. And they left these interesting looking tracks. That's cool. Now as a scientist, Saig investigates how animals communicate. She has learned that animals use all of their senses to communicate. Sound is a very good way to communicate in places where it's hard to see. In the ocean, animals can't see very far through the water, so they mostly use sound to communicate. So here's Leila Saig. It says that elephants use touch to bond with one another. Skunks use smell to defend themselves and frogs use sound to attract mates. Whoa, look at that frog. His whole throat is puffed up. And whales use sound to communicate in the dark ocean. For many years, Saeg has been investigating bottlenose dolphin communication. Bottlenose dolphins use many sounds to communicate. They click, squeak, and buzz. They use sounds to find their way, to hunt and to stay in touch with each other. They also use signature whistles to communicate. Each dolphin has a whistle that is different from every other dolphin's whistle. That whistle is the dolphin's signature. It's almost like our uh, fingerprints are all different from each other. So it's almost like the dolphins have their own fingerprints in a sound. Saig knew that bottlenose dolphins use signature whistles to stay in touch with each other. She had some questions about signature whistles though. She wondered if dolphins could recognize family members by their whistles. She also wanted to know how dolphins could tell each other's whistles apart. Whoops, too many pages. It says Saeed used special equipment to listen to and record bottlenose dolphins. Saeed collected data to answer these questions. She wanted to prove that dolphins can recognize a dolphin they know based on the sound of its whistle. For many years, Saeg recorded bottlenose dolphin whistles in Florida. She spent many hours out on a boat following the dolphins as they swam around. She recorded their whistles as they were meeting other dolphins, catching fish, and exploring new areas. Come on. There we go. Saeg studied which dolphins were which the which sounds the dolphins were making during different activities. She also played some whistles for dolphins to see how they reacted. So Saeg played the whistles for dolphins to see how they reacted. She found that most dolphins reacted more strongly to the whistles of their family members than to the whistles of other dolphins. The dolphins turned towards the whistles of their family members the way you might turn towards the voice of someone you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Saeg and her fellow scientists went out on a boat to record dolphin whistles. Saeg recorded many dolphins each year. Then she studied her recordings carefully. Some of the dolphin whistles were very high in pitch. That must mean that the waves were really close together. The sounds were higher than humans can hear. Because some of the sounds were outside Saeg's range of hearing, she could not just listen to her recordings. Saeg had to make visual representations to show the full range of dolphin sounds. So she couldn't even just listen. She had to visualize sounds because they were some that humans couldn't hear. Saeg used her computer to make visual representations of the sounds. These visual representations showed how, how each sound changed over time. Dolphin signature whistles change pitch, just like musical melodies. The dolphin, the visual representations allowed Saeg to see these changes in pitch clearly. Now she could see differences between the whistles of different dolphins. Each signature whistle is so different that Saeg can recognize a dolphin just by the visual representation of its whistle. That's pretty cool. Saeg now, Saeg now has a library of signature whistles for 200 bottlenose dolphins. So we've got dolphin A, dolphin B, dolphin C. The visual representations show how each dolphin has its own special whistle. I mean, those look very different from each other. Saeg wondered how baby dolphins or calves first developed their signature whistles. She followed mother dolphins and their calves to find out. She found that dolphin calves practice their whistles. Most of the time, a calf will develop a different whistle from its mother's. A calf's whistle is usually set within a few months of birth. 
Once it's set, a dolphin's whistle stays the same for the rest of the dolphin's life. Sayek still wondered ex what exactly dolphins were noticing when they recognized the signature whistle of another dolphin. She knew that humans are good at paying attention to changes in pitch. She did not know if that was the same for, for dolphins. There's no way of knowing exactly what a dolphin is hearing or thinking, but scientists can look at their behavior for clues. Sayek and her fellow scientists looked at many visual representations of dolphin whistles. Sayek simplified her visual representation of dolphin whistles. She took out everything but the changes in pitch over time. She turned these simplified visual representations into actual sounds that she could play with speakers. Sayek played the simplified whistles for dolphins to see how they reacted. The dolphins were just as good at recognizing the simplified uh, signature whistles. The dolphins could recognize a family member just based on the changes in pitch in its, of its whistle. Sayek found that the change is the most important discovery. Sayek found that the change in pitch is the most important thing that dolphins are listening for. This was a big discovery. She was able to make an explanation of why dolphins can recognize signature whistles. Like all scientists, Sayeg had many has many new questions from her investigations. She wonders how dolphins communicate using other sounds besides their signature whistles. Scientists don't yet have a good explanation for how and why dolphins use certain sounds. Sayeg has also begun to investigate the sounds made by other types of animals. She's investigating the sounds made by orcas and pilot whales. Orcas and pilot whales are toothed whales, just like dolphins. Like bottlenose dolphins, they make many kinds of sounds to communicate. To make an explanation about how these whales communicate, scientists first need to sort the whale's sounds into groups based on changes in pitch. Visual representations of sounds help them do this. We see some pilot whales and an orca. Humans are very good at grouping visual representations that show patterns of change in pitch. Saig asked people to visit a website and sort visual representations of orca and pilot whale sounds. Non-scientists were able to do the sorting just as well as scientists. This means that even people who are not trained scientists can help with this investigation. It's really cool. It says these visual representations were sorted by scientists. You can hear or you can see how the pattern is the same. I see a repeating pattern. Sorting all, these vis all those visual representations takes a long time. The scientists are happy to have help. People all over the world, including many students, are working together. They are helping discover how orcas and pilot whales use sound to communicate. Oh, that's a really cool picture. Investigations like Saig's help us understand how animals communicate using sound. The more we understand, the more we can do to protect the animals from harm. For example, if we know how dolphins communicate, we can stop doing things that makes it hard for them to communicate. Scientific discoveries help governments decide what kind of laws are needed to, correct, to protect ocean animals. There is still a lot more to discover about how animals use sound to communicate in the ocean. We have our glossary. Communicate, data, explanation, investigate, investigation, pattern, pitch, and visual representation. We're going to pause our video here. We're going to move to a new video for the second half of our lesson. I'll see you soon. Hey again and welcome back. In this next activity, we're going to reflect on the reading that we did. So the first thing that we're going to wonder about what did they learn about signature whistles and how did she figure it out? And how did visual representations help? So take a moment and think back through what, what really important piece came up for her about the signature whistles? And how did images like this help? Maybe pause the video here, tell someone in your home, or write down your thoughts for these questions and I'll see you in a moment. So Saig found that change in pitch is the most important thing that dolphins are listening for. They're listening for how high or low the sound is. 
And dolphins can even recognize each other by their unique signature whistle. Each dolphin has their own signature whistle, and they can listen for changes in pitch and really and actually recognize each other. And to figure that out, she created and analyzed visual representations like these of the dolphin whistles. The visual representation showed Saig that the, pat that the signature whistles have patterns of pitch changes. So we can see pitch over here, and we can see over time what changes happen in the pitch. So I see up, 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 down, up, down, up, 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 down, and then down to up. Now, if you have your notebook, please go to page 64. If you don't, that's okay. Just grab a piece of paper. And we're going to write an answer to the question that we've been investigating, which is how can dolphins use different sounds to communicate with one another? So what I'm going to have you do is keep this screen up, pause the video, and take a moment either on page 64 or just on your piece of paper to write your answer to that question, how can dolphins use different sounds to communicate with one another? When you're ready, come back. All right, welcome back. We're gonna go back to those same dolphin whistles. We're gonna do a little bit of exploration with them. So since the dolphin whistles were hard to hear, Saig used a computer to make visual representations of each whistle. So these are actually the visual representations of the three dolphins that we listened to. This type of visual representation shows how a sound's pitch changes over time. So we have the pitch over here and the time on this side, on this axis. Now take a look at this visual representation of dolphin A. I'm gonna play the dolphin A sound, make this smaller. And one more time, again, look at the visual representation of the sound and compare it to the actual sound. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for dolphin B. So you might have noticed some differences between Dolphin A's whistle and Dolphin B's whistle. Let's actually make this a little bit smaller. You can see Dolphin A and Dolphin B. Let's listen to each one. That was A. And that was B. Huh. So just think about what differences did you notice there? And now we're going to listen to Dolphin C. So keep an eye on the visual representation. I want you to think through this question, how are the three whistles alike and how are they different? There's no right or wrong answers here. Just want you to take a minute to reflect on that question. This is a great chance to pause the video and write down your ideas for these questions. How are the three whistles alike and how are they different from one another? When you're ready, come back. And so what did Saig set out to investigate about dolphins? How did these visual representations help her? Well, I know that she helped, she wanted to investigate how dolphins recognized each other's calls. And those visual representations helped her visualize their signature whistles. 
They helped her conclude that a change in pitch is the most important thing that dolphins are listening for to recognize another dolphin. And they helped her compare the signature whistles of different dolphins. So we can look at the three of these and we can tell these are very different pitches. These are very different sounds and signature whistles. The people we read about in Seeing Sound also use sound in their work. And when we think through, they use sound for a lot of different things. It was to recognize if people could hear well. It was to see what animals might be hearing. It was to adapt sound for music or movies. So visualizations of sound and sound representations are really helpful in a lot of different areas. Now I want you to just keep thinking, what did we learn today that might help us figure out how the dolphins in Blue Bay are communicating? And that's the question that we're going to return to in the next couple lessons. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon.